Buenas noches. Es un placer estar aquí participando en el Maratón Cultural del Centro de Periodismo Investigativo desde Puerto Rico hasta Nueva York y de charlar por unos pocos minutos con el gran artista Miguel Luciano. Miguel, thanks for participating in this uh, tremendous event. Uh, my pleasure to be with you. Uh, such a just, pleasure to be here with you. Just a while back, you mounted an extraordinary exhibition of a group of people that are near and dear to my heart, the New York Young Lords, uh, a group that I was fortunate enough to help, uh, to help start and lead more than 50 years ago. I wanted to ask you, why did you decide to focus on the Young Lords? And could you take us through some of the amazing uh, photographic exhibition that you mounted in the streets of El Barrio? Sure. Uh, let me bring some of those images up on screen. And uh, I'll, I can walk us through here. Yeah. So um, thank you, Juan. And uh, uh, I, I, it's such a pleasure to be here talking to you about this history, which, which you lived and I learned about as kind of the next generation. And so. Um, I have to really give credit to Iran Maristani, who is the uh, photographer uh, of all of these images and uh, was my collaborator in this project. Um, I was really honored to work with his archive. And, um, to... and who was with the Young Lords from the very beginning. <laughs> Absolutely. So he's one of the original uh, members of the New York chapter, too. And he uh, is born and raised in El Barrio, still here in El Barrio, uh, my, my dear friend and neighbor. And so... Um, I, I got to learn a lot more about the history through his archive in, in the past several years. Um, and we wanted to make this a history uh, that was uh, available to the next generation in a way that they could understand in these streets where they occurred, right? Um, so 50 years later, this was a project that went up at the 50 year anniversary of the Young Lords in 2019, originally. Um, and so it, famous images like this, uh, this uh, photograph of the Bronx March, uh, which traveled from the Bronx all the way to Queens, but passed through East Harlem. Um, we put up uh, on the corner of uh, 111th and Lexington Avenue, which is also known as Young Lord's Way today, across from the People's Church. It's probably the most famous kind of symbolic uh, location of El Barrio's uh, history of the Young Lords in, uh, here in East Harlem. So, um, The People's Church, the place where Pedro Pietri first uh, publicly performed his, his uh, legendary Puerto Rican obituary poem. Absolutely. And so, um, so I learned a lot about this history through the project too. I learned that there were, you know, there were two takers of takers of the people's church and uh, two distinct histories that take place during those times. And so the, the photographic archive was a really amazing way to discover that. But this was kind of our central area um, here where the walking tours went through. And we did walking tours for months and months, all spring and summer of 2019. Um, Another image of the Young Lords uh, uh, March of the, for, this was the Bronx March. So the Bronx March was a, was a march actually in support of the, of the Panther 21, um, uh, from what I understand. And um, what I love about this image is that, you know, front and center is a member of the community. She was a, a member of the community who, who lived very near where this image went up on 99th and 2nd. Um, and these kinds of images really stood out for me um, as powerful images of how the community was involved in the movement. Um, so uh, we, we, we selected images that sometimes were famous and sometimes not so famous uh, in, in Iram's archive uh, as a way to tell a story about uh, activism in our neighborhood uh, that we want the next generation to know about and be proud about. Um, and, so, and you may recognize uh, this, this photo here. Yes, embarrassingly so. It's a lot thinner version of me <laughs> 50 years ago. Amazing. So this is, you, how about you tell me about this photo? I would love to hear you describe this photo. Well, this is outside our first office, which was on 111th and Madison Avenue. Uh, and uh, we subsequently had many offices all over New York City and, of course, in other, in Connecticut, in Newark, New Jersey, in Boston, in Philadelphia. But this was the first uh, Young Lord office uh, and it was where we ran all of our political education classes and we did community uh, history of Puerto Rico uh, classes at night for the community there as well and it was really where the the hub the heart of the young lords uh, when we first began uh, of course it no longer exists the, the famous uh, New York City master builder Robert Moses tore down that building and many others around it uh, in the uh, 1980s and of course and it now is uh, Schomburg Plaza middle income housing uh, that uh, that Moses later built. 
Yeah, so that's that's fascinating. We we actually because uh, the building is no longer there, we 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 mounted this image as close as we could to that location where the photo was taken. And the whole idea is, is that we we put up ten images in five different locations and tried to situate the photo as close as possible to where the actual history took place, to where the photo was taken. So this was actually mounted across the street uh, from the uh, from the office building, in which is which was it's still an empty lot, but it's slated for development now for another housing complex that will go there. It's supposed to be affordable, we'll see. Um, but one thing I wanna point out in this image that for me has always been fascinating and um, I actually did a recreation of this window storefront in a previous project at the Center for Puerto Rican Studies some years ago for another exhibition at the Iram. But in the, in the uh, window are all these posters from Puerto Rico as well. They have the Carteles de, de Viverco, for example, de Tufino. Um, several other artists from the island who were making posters in the 70s, uh, late 60s. And I was fascinated by that connection too, how the Puerto Rican artists, posters from the island made it into the window of the Young Lords. Yes, there was a lot of connection between artists here and artists there as well. And uh, Antonio Martorell made several, uh, several posters for some of our activities as well over the years. So we had quite a, uh, quite a collection of radical artists from both the island uh, and the US that uh, helped to spread the word of the Young Lords. Amazing, amazing. And it, if I remember right, wasn't also at this, it's around this time, uh, Real Great Society, Taller Boricua, the early versions of those organizations on the same block? Real Great Society was right across the street. Yeah. <laughs> it was yeah. right across the street over the, the, the Puerto Rican restaurant that we all used to eat, uh, eat at uh, right. back then. <laughs> Amazing. None of which is there anymore, by the way. Like those buildings are gone. Um, so and walking through the project, we had this uh, incredible image of Denise Oliver uh, right next to yours, which is another image uh, that was taken at the office. And Denise was uh, the first woman in the central leadership, right, in the central committee of the Young Lords. Yes. And it's such a striking photograph. Um, this photo here, 50 years later, is this is Iram Maristani, the photographer with Denise Oliver, standing in front of the photo that he took of her on the same block 50 years later. So there were some really powerful moments like this that happened during the project, um, uh, just commemorating this history and also moving it forward with these walking tours with new, new students. And so this is a student from a local high school there was one among hundreds of students that actually toured the project, um, learning about this history and the people um, that created it. And, and then this image, I, I, one of my favorites in the project, um, the takeover of the, of the x-ray truck, of the TB testing truck. And I wonder if you could, if you could tell us a little bit about this, uh, uh, this history, because you were the, the chairman of education and health this time? Well, yeah, I was the minister of education and health. So all these health uh, offenses came under my purview. But basically, the city had uh, mobile chest x-ray units uh, for tuberculosis that they had in different parts of the city, but they never brought them into East Harlem or Harlem. And when we tried to get them to do so, they refused to do so. So we just decided to check in the paper when was the next... Uh, a uh, scheduled visit of the TB truck near East Harlem. And uh, when we found out, we just uh, hijacked the truck. <laughs> we, we went in and told the technicians, we're taking it over, you're coming with us. And we put the truck right in front of our office on 111th and Madison. And I think we conducted uh, 700, if I'm not yeah. mistaken. 770, seven I read 770 uh, people were screened within right. three days. Which, until until the police took it back, you know, but we made the point that the East Harlem was being ignored by the city health system. Amazing. And just like, so the example I remember too, is that I think the normal amount of people in the previous location that they would screen was maybe 300 people. So the, the numbers were dramatically increased. And what I love about that story is that it also demonstrates how uh, one of the principles of the Lord's, you know, in terms of being able to control uh, public resources and 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 uh, uh, having community control over public resources. This was a, like an incredible demonstration of how powerful that could be and how effective it could be um, when the highest tuberculosis rates in the city were in East Harlem. Uh, Precisely, yes. Right. So um, uh, this iconic image of uh, uh, the Palante newspaper and a, a young member of the Lords with Palante, this was in June, 1970. This is all on the same block. Um, so a lot of these things happened then on the same block or took place on the same 
same block on Madison. Um, and, and then this march uh, protesting the death of Julio Rodan. Um, and so this, yeah, maybe you can say something about this history. Right, and Julio was actually was found hanged in his cell uh, in uh, in the New York in the New York Detention Center, Manhattan Detention Center, and uh, we believe that he uh, quite possibly was actually killed. And so we had again more massive protests, a second takeover of the church, demanding prison reforms uh, in New York City, which actually did happen. The mayor appointed a commission, the Vanden Heuvel Commission that found uh, all kinds of problems with the New York City uh, jail system and instituted a bunch of reforms as a result. And these were, and there were like uh, hundreds and hundreds of people that marched in, in, this, uh, in this, it was almost like a, a procession and a protest at the same time. Um, and here, this, I just always love this image of the, of the young people, it's so powerful. Um, but as you mentioned, it led to the second takeover of the church, right? So this is also like around 1970. Yeah, that, uh, the second takeover was October 1970, yes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. amazing. Yeah. So we, we, uh, this was also a powerful image with young people to sort of talk about um, issues of police violence uh, past and present that um, have continued to plague our communities. And so um, these images from 50 years ago uh, were so relevant 50 years later, uh, you know, even more so today, you know, this was, a year before um, last summer's uh, uprisings in Puerto Rico and, uh, and in the US, both. Uh, and then the, here we have the garbage offensive. Uh, 111th and 3rd Avenue, this was uh, the last image on 111th, um, which uh, was the first public action of the Young Lords, correct? Right, that was in July of 1969. We, uh, the, we were sweeping the streets uh, several weekends trying to get the sanitation department to pick up all the trash that we had collected because they didn't provide sanitation services in East Harlem uh, the, at the same level that they did in other parts of the city. And so when the sanitation department wouldn't pick them up, we just took all the bags, dumped them in the middle of Third Avenue, which was a main thoroughfare uh, to block traffic and force the city to uh, pick them up. And, uh, and at, some, at some point, some people set fire to the trash and it suddenly became the East Harlem garbage riot when it was really the East Harlem garbage protest. Uh, but the government did pick up all the trash and they, and they started improving sanitation service as a result. That's incredible. And this, uh, and this was in response to communities' concerns, right? In terms of what I, what I had heard was that uh, the Young Lords surveyed the community about what were the, uh, the, the biggest issues in the community of concern, right? Right. And everyone said the biggest problem we have is just too much trash in the street and the city doesn't pick it up. Right. So that's why we started sweeping the streets and collecting the garbage. So we put this image up right at the same intersection where this history took place on 3rd Avenue and 111th Street, um, same intersection where the photo was taken. Um, and then what happened was that uh, through a lot of the walking tours, as folks from the neighborhood would show up and literally just start to tell us that the history um, themselves. And so this is Papa who lives uh, in the neighborhood, who's pointing himself out here at 15 years old. And this was an amazing part of the project. Uh, as I said, I was born in the 70s, so I learned about this history. But when we have folks in the neighborhood who could tell us the history firsthand, it reminded us constantly that this is a living history, that we're still here. El Barrio is still a Puerto Rican neighborhood. And um, this was another kind of powerful element of the project in terms of the oral histories. Well, Miguel, I wanted to ask you because we have only a couple of minutes left, but the, uh, these are such powerful images. I want to thank you for preserving this history for uh, future generations, but also to ask you, uh, one of the things that we used to say in the Young Lords all the time back then, 50 years ago, was that we were a divided nation, the people of, of the Puerto Ricans on the island and those here in the United States. But that back then, two thirds of all Puerto Ricans were on the, uh, on, on the island and only one third was here in the United States. Now, 50 years later, for all the changes that have occurred, we now have two thirds of all people of Puerto Rican descent live in the United States. Only yeah. one third are in Puerto Rico. How do you see the diaspora relationship and the role of the diaspora in trying to assist not only Puerto Rico, but organizations like uh, the Centro de, de, de Periodismo Investigativo in the work that they do? Sure. I mean, I think that the, the bridge is so fluid now that it's, it's really different than even when I was younger. 
you know? So I was, yo nací en la isla, pero este, yo me fui bien pequeño a los dos o tres años. And so I, I grew up in the States my whole life. Uh, not in New York specifically, but I've been here like 20 years now. And so um, it's, uh, it's been fascinating for me just to see in the arc of my, my own life how, uh, how, how much more fluid uh, our, our kind of back and forth has become and how uh, invested we've become in each other's uh, issues and struggles and, uh, and it, it, it much more so than when I was even younger is what it feels like. Um, I think about this as an artist and so there's a lot of dialogue between artists back and forth, um, but there's still a lot more room for growth. Having said that, there's a lot more room for growth. And I think uh, after Maria, a lot of folks in the diaspora really started to, um, um, I think invest more deeply in what they could do um, if in Puerto Rico and, and, and um, how they could think about supporting. And um, I think that's a really healthy thing that came out of um, uh, that catastrophe. So um, I hope we're still building on that kind of energy moving forward uh, in an island that's still in crisis. Well, thank you. And uh, I want to urge everyone who's listening and watching this to please support and donate to the Center for Investigative Journalism in Puerto Rico. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Juan. Okay. Thank you. CPI. Take care.